fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver, away! Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's encouraging for all of us to know that champions are made, not born. We can get ahead like Ted Klazuski, power hitter for the Cincinnati Red Lakes. Here's the story of little Ted and how he worked to get ahead by playing ball each chance he got and doing what the champs all taught. A bowl of Wheaties helped a lot. Now Ted slams them off the wall, still likes Wheaties best of all. Why, big Ted Klazuski was right on Wheaties, and you bet he still eats them. Ted knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Ted, break up the game. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. It was nearing midnight when cafe owner Roy Murray answered the knock on the outside door of his office at the rear of the Golden Nugget Cafe. He opened the door and admitted two rough-looking men, Red Emery and Pete Stockton. Hi, Red. Pete. Hi, Hi boys. Come on in. Sit down. We just got your message a little while ago, boss. Yeah. Pete and I were playing cards over Never the... mind what you were doing, Red. It's what I want you to do that's important. Yeah, what's that, boss? I want you to be at the stagecoach relay station at Cross Trails before sunup tomorrow. Uh -huh. What for? Are you expecting somebody on it, boss? Yeah, Pete. The messenger was six or seven thousand dollars in cash. Uh -huh. You boys are going to take it from him. Six or seven thousand? How do you know about it, boss? Tom Kendall, foreman out at the Widow Glasgow's ranch, was here tonight. <laughs> he had a few under his belt, and he told me. It's money your husband left her and what she's just getting now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Except she's not getting it, huh? Right. This town, you know, and this cafe has been a losing proposition since the prospectors stopped looking for gold in these parts. I'm running out of cash and running out of it fast. That's why I want you to get the widow's money tomorrow. I guess we can do it, boss. Should be easy. This spot like the relay station. It's perfect. Get there before dawn. Be ready to move in as soon as they take the money out of the baggage compartment and hand it to Tom Kendall. What do we do with the money, boss? And, uh... What's our cut? Don't worry about your cut. You always get a fair shake from me, don't you? Sure, but I Forget won't... about that part just now. I have ideas how we can share three ways in that money. Make ten times as much out of it. Like I said, boss, what do we do with the money, though? Hide it away. Then go about your business like you always do, so no one will get wise. Stash it where, though? There's that old shack up across Rocky Creek where old man Johnson used to do his digging. Nobody ever goes up there anymore. It's wild country now. Yeah, yeah, we know. We hit out there after we knocked off the bank, remember? Yeah. But as I was saying, you put the money away there. The stagecoach from St. Joseph came to a stop at the Cross Trails Relay Station shortly before dawn the next morning. Oh, oh, oh. We're running ahead of schedule. Yep. As his guard leaped to the ground and started to help the station agent open the baggage compartment, the driver called to the one passenger inside the coach. All right, young fella, this is where you get off. This is Cross Trails, 
The youth was Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, who had notified his uncle earlier that he would arrive at this time. Dan left the coach. We're ahead of time, aren't we? Yeah, a little. Traveling light, that's why. Somebody going to meet you here? Yes, but probably not till later. I'll wait inside the shack. Well, there's coffee and sinkers to be had inside. Be here 15 minutes. Hey, sir! Uh, who can that be? Well, I'll be Tom Kendall, you old horse thief. What are you doing here? Hey, Sarge. Got a package for me? I have one for your boss, Mrs. Glasgow. She with you? Nope. Come to get it myself. Where is it? The satchel in the baggage compartment. The shotgun guard's getting it now. You'll have to sign for it, Tom. Well, here's the guard now. Who's going to take this satchel, Sarge? I was... Tom told... here's going to pick it up. He's Mrs. Glasgow's foreman. Tom, if you'll sign here. All right, get your hand up. Red Emery and Pete Stockton, their faces covered by bandanas, had emerged from the shadows with guns pointing. Stand against the wall, all of you. Drop that bag in the ground. The guard reached for his gun, but Red shot first. Uh, Then the Cross Trails agent who had joined them made a move. Pete's gun smashed down on his head. Tom Kendall, losing all caution, ran past the stage driver and started to swing. You dirty murdering polecat! Get your hands off that satchel! Head back! No! Now, anybody else want a bullet? No. All right, I have the bag. Let's get started. All right. You two, if you don't want a dose of lead, you'll stay right here until we get away. Now, let's get. As Red Emery turned slightly, Dan Reed sprang and threw his arms around the bandit's arm, yelling at Sarge, the driver, as he did so. Grab the bag. Use your gun. The driver was too slow. Pete Stockton pushed him aside, took the driver's gun from the man's hand, and brought the butt crashing down on Dan Reed's head. I ought to kill him. Never mind. I'm all right. Let's get out of here. All right, you stay right there, driver. I'll drill you. The two crooks went back into the shadows, then mounted their horses. Pete fired two shots over the driver's head. Try to follow him. The next shot will be low. Don't worry about him. Come on. Get up. Get up. Oh. As the bandits with their loot rode into the underbrush nearby, Sarge the driver dropped to his knees hey. beside the two men who had been shot. Tom. Tom, you're still breathing. Are you all right? Can you hear me? <laughs> Victor, Dan Reed's horse, was being led by Toto as he and the Lone Ranger set out from their camp that morning to meet the masked man's nephew. They were high in the hills when they heard the shots from the vicinity of cross trails. Come, 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 Victor! They sent their own horses and Victor into a gallop and arrived at the scene of the holdup about ten minutes after the bandits had escaped. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They dismounted and saw a man attending one of four men who lay on the ground, two of them bleeding badly. Sarge looked up, his eyes wide, as he saw the masked man. Look! Didn't your partners do enough? They took the money. Leave us alone. I'm not a hold-up man. I wear this mask for other reasons. He must have been looking ground. Dan, has he been shot? No, they knocked him and the agent out. But these two... Here, let me look at them. Otto, get our medical kit. Uh, we get them. The Lone Ranger took charge of the situation, and with the help of Toto and Sarge, treated the wounded Tom Kendall and the guard who had also been shot. They bandaged the two men and lifted them into the stagecoach. <laughs> There. By some miracle, they're still alive. Driver. Sarge is what they call me. Stranger, if these two live, it's going to be on account of what you and your engine pal did just now. If you want to be sure that they remain alive, Sarge, get them to Orville as soon as possible. Sure, I'll get them to Doc Gray's office. You'd better take the agent along with you, too. That's a bad crack he's had on his head. He'll be able to look after these other men. What about the boy? We'll look after him. We were on our way to meet him when we heard the shots here. I... I'm all right now. Do you see, Sarge? Well, whatever you say. I'll get going, then. Oh, uh, notify Sheriff Clinton what's happened. Sure thing. Do you know the sheriff? Yes, and if you take him a silver bullet, he'll know who I am. What? Tonto and I have had occasion to help him in the past. Sil- silver bullet? Tonto? Say I know Sarge, you... the important thing is the lives of those men. Get going, please. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. This is Mel Allen, sports announcer. Maybe you're interested in what big league scouts look for in young players. Take the case of Harvey Keene of Detroit, voted to keep the year in 1953. Harvey could hit, sure. But more than that, the scouts noticed he soaked up instruction, practiced hard, followed a good training diet, including Wheaties. Now, I happen to know Harvey's been eating Wheaties 17 years now, since he was six. 
Scouts tell me too many boys dream of waking up and finding themselves champions. What they don't realize is champions are made, not born. That's a fact. Champions are made, not born. Now, I've seen average players make themselves into champions, but it calls for hair trigger condition. For that kind of condition, choose food that sparks you with energy. Champions choose Wheaties. There must be a reason, and this is it. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. If you want to get on your way to the top, keep in mind champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. continue. The first traces of dawn were in the sky as Sarge headed the stagecoach toward the town of Orville. Then Dan Reed, recovering rapidly, told of the holdup. He ended by holding out his hand. When I was struggling with the fellow, I had a hold of his coat. This is a piece of the material. I must have torn it from the coat as I fell. Now, let me see. It's distinctive enough. I couldn't tell that in the dark. We'll hold on to it. Make him in handy. Oh, Dan, where did you say the crooks had their horses? Over here. Oh? At the side of the station. Somewhere around this spot, I think. Now, me look, find hoof prints. You're a fresh prince. Two horses. These must be the ones left for the hold of men. Ah, uh, only marks near. And they go through the brush here, see? They must have ridden up into the hill. Ah, uh, plenty places to hide in hills. And it'll be hard to follow a trail on the rocky ground up there. Still, we'll do our best. Uh, we go after him, Kimasali? Yes, Toto. Maybe hours before the sheriff gets the posse and arrives out here. We'll move while the trail is still fresh. I'm glad we have Victor with us, Dan. So am I, sir. I know you'll find those crooks somehow. I want to be with you when you do. Come on, sir. Get him up, Scott. Come on, Victor. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed rode into the underbrush and followed the hoof prints faintly discernible in the first light of morning. But less than an hour later, they came into the open once more in the rocky hills above. The hoof prints were no longer apparent. Oh, sure. oh. Well, from now on, it'll be difficult. Could have gone in any direction up here. Yes, but somehow, somewhere, we'll be able to pick up their trail again. That is, if we spread out. Many places then can hide, Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. This is old mining country. Ah. We know where many old mines are. Yes, we do, Tonto. They're hiding out. They could be in any of them. Uh, Kimasabi, me go to north and look at places me know. All right, Tonto. I'll head up into the hills from the other side. Well, then, you go with Tonto. Yes, sir. Now, if you come upon the trail again, fire three shots. If I pick it up, I'll do the same. Whoever fires the shots will remain at the spot and wait, is that it? Yes. Then we'll continue on the trail together. At that moment in the abandoned cabin at the entrance to what had been the Johnson Mine, the two crooks, Red Emery and Pete Stockton, counted the money in the satchel they'd stolen. <laughs> Red, there's over $8,000 here. That, uh, that's more than the boss expected. Yeah. He said six or seven thousand. Hey, what do you think his idea is about this money? I don't know. But if we held out a thousand or so, he'd never know. Hey, Pete, look how light it's getting outside. We ought to be getting out of here and riding back to town where our alibi is. Yeah. We hold out a thousand dollars and tell the boss there was only seven. Tonto and Dan Reed, riding together, crossed the stream called Rocky Creek. They are on the opposite bank. They separated briefly, hoping to pick up any marks of water-soaked hoof prints along the shore. Dan was about a quarter of a mile away from Tonto, about to abandon his search, when he saw the faint imprint of hoofs heading from the water into the hills above. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, ho. Victor, this could be the trail we're looking for. Let's ride up to where the ground's softer and study it. 
Come on, Victor. As Dan Wheat and Victor started among the trees that dotted the incline, he came upon hoof prints still fresh and still wet. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, ho. He dismounted. Steady, boy. Then he drew his gun and fired three shots into the air. At the very moment that two horsemen appeared above him riding hard, Red Emery, riding ahead of Pete Stockton, was on top of the boy before he could leap to his horse's back. Got that gun before I spike it. Ho, 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 ho. Red, move it. Easy, boy. steady, boy. That's what I'm going to find out. Steady, boy. Kid, what are you doing up here? Hey, it's a boy from the stage station, the one who jumped. You fool, why don't you shut up? Well, kid, Red, don't waste time with him. He's the one, all right. He knows who we are. I'd wait, Pete. You wanted to know about the shots. <laughs> well, boy, what about him? Is somebody with you up here? You're trailing hey, this one. Look, he's coming this way along the creek. An engine. Yeah. He's looking around for someone. All right, you. Is he the one you signaled to when you shot? What? Yes. Who else was with you? No one. We crossed the creek together. All right, that's all I want to know. Pete, get behind that tree. What? Get behind that tree fast. We'll get the engine up here. You take him. Yeah, you get him up here. All right, kid, call to your pal. I'll be behind this rock. No fooling of any kind or I'll kill you. I mean it, I'll kill you. I'll do as you say. Tonto! Oh, Tonto! Tonto heard Dan Reed's call, and seeing the boy halfway up the incline, galloped his horse there. Oh, Scott, oh, brother. Oh, Dan, you find trail, huh? Let me see, Mark. Easy, Scott. Easy, brother. Dan, who's this horse? All right, engine, you're coming. Tonto, watch out. Oh, too late. Yeah, not worth Pete. He didn't know you were behind him. Yeah, what do we do now? We have these two on our hands. What do we do with them? There's only one thing, Pete. we got to get rid of them. We can't do it here. Shots could be heard way down the other side of the creek. All right, all right. We'll take them back to the cabin. Get rid of them there for good. And we'll take the money and we'll... Yeah, but come on. <laughs> Red and Pete lifted Tahoe's inert form and laid him across the saddle of his horse, covered Dan with a gun, and forced him to ride along with them as they led Scout back to the cabin a short distance above. Oh, 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 Inside the cabin, they placed Tonto on the floor and tied Dan's hands behind his back. Look, we can't waste time, Red. Have to take the money away from here. Yeah, you pull up those boards and get the statue from under the floor. There. All right. Where's that crowbar? Right behind you. Yeah, I see it. Pete used the crowbar to pry loose the boards of the floor and cover saddle recently placed there by the crooks. We're going wrong with trouble to put this money down here. Now we have to knock ourselves out again to get it. Kid, I guess we should have killed you before when we had the chance. What kind of fool are you following us up here like this? I'm not a fool. I knew if I saw you again, I could identify you. Yeah, and then Red, I... here we are. I have the session again. And hold on to it. I'll take care of these two. We're going to take this money back to the boss. We have to kill a lot of people for it. I don't see why we should have to split with Roy Murray. We'll talk about that later. And let's take these two into the mine and shoot them there. Then we can take their bodies and... And we'll what? Hey, the masked man is... Oh, why, you... cut a draw and I'll shoot you too. All right, all right, I'm not going to shoot. Should have been holding onto that satchel. You might have had a better chance. Dan, what did they do to Tonto? The same as they did to me earlier. Knocked him out with a gun butt. Oh, man. Tonto's coming too. You, mister. What? Untie the ropes on that boy's wrist. Do it at once. All right. Pete, with the eyes and gun of the Lone Ranger leveled on him, obeyed the masked man's orders. Then he stood against the wall with his hands high as Dan Reed helped revive Tonto. Tonto's head cleared quickly. You make mistake, Kimasabi. No. Don't worry about that, Tonto. It isn't me either. You heard my shots? Yes, and picked up your trail easily after I crossed the creek. I've been heading this way, Dan. I have to recall that Johnson Myers... All right, masked man, you're here. And these two must be pals of yours. What about us? What about me? Look at my wrist. We'll bandage it before we take you to the sheriff. Don't worry. Sheriff? Hey, you, you mean you're going to do that? Yes. You'll be arrested for shooting those men at the station and for stealing the money that's in this satchel. They mentioned someone called the boss. I heard that too, Dan. Roy Murray, they said. I've suspected him for a long time. I think we'll be able to prove something against him now. Otto, are you well enough to go along? Oh, keep us happy. Then when you've bandaged this red-headed fellow, we'll head for the relay station at Cross Trails. <laughs> Tonto 
Tonto, Dan, and their prisoners reached the stagecoach station, there was yet no sign of the sheriff or his posse. They haven't arrived. To save them time and trouble, to take these men into Orville. All right, get going, you two. Come on, get up, get up. Come on. Come on, victim. The Lone Ranger and Tonto delivered the men to Sheriff Clinton at a spot halfway into town. They also returned the money that belonged to the widow Glasgow. Sheriff Clinton was amazed. Well, I could hardly believe it when old Sarge handed me the silver bullet, said you were cross trails. As soon as I heard you were, I figured my job was going to be easy. We were lucky to get on their trail so soon. <laughs> it wasn't luck, I know that. No more than it was luck that you got these two before they killed Tonto and Dan. Like you said they were going to. How are those men who were shot? They'll pull through, the doctor said, thanks to the treatment they got. So what about treatment for me? I'm shot too. Emery, you'll be glad your treatment isn't at the end of a rope. That's yeah, where you ought to be, you yeah. child. Only the masked man's doctrine of Tom Kendall and the stage guard saved you two from being charged with murder. You'll have no trouble convicting them for the things they did, though, will you? Nope. And we'll send Roy Murray away with them. He's the one who put you on this holdup, wasn't he, Pete? Tom Kendall says he told Roy about the money last night while he was feeling his own. Look, Sheriff, if we tell you about Roy's part in this and some other jobs, do we get a deal from you? Uh, We'll see. But you'll go to jail no matter what you tell. However... All right, all right, we'll tell. Only get me to a doctor and let me... Hey, that masked hombre's riding away with the engine and the boy. Sheriff, you letting him do that? Yep. He'll be back if we need his testimony of the boys or Tantos to send you to jail. But he's mad. Only his face is. His actions aren't. They're all good. And it's the reason that all lawmen are happy like I am, that he comes and goes as he pleases. Because something good always follows. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. I'll see <laughs> Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. No wonder Cheerios gives you real go power. It's made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... She's feeling her Cheerios. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.